There you go. Get your, get your balloons, people. Get your balloons. Get your balloons. Uh, but anyway, let's bring on Brian Daigle. How What's you doing, up, Brian? Boys? There you go. Loving it, mate. Loving it, Ben. Representing Ben and Sim. Representing her. Good afternoon to you. Good afternoon to the 1.7 thousand people watching. And as Ben and I will say on a regular basis... Just another day in paradise at the shit show that is Tottenham Hotspur Business Club. Let's be Thank honest, you, Brian. Yeah. Are you surprised? Are, are you surprised by any any of this news coming out today? Ben, as you know, we spoke yesterday, and I yeah. And what did I say to you? Through. What did I say yep. to you? you? Listen, you, <laughs> mate. Just this this football club is just it is broken. It is broken. <laughs> No matter what happens, I mean, it weren't even 9 a.m. here. All right, it was 9 a.m. in uh, Amsterdam. And this is what happens. This is what happens. We, we, we peacock about, we show our cards, and now we're getting played by managers that want contract extensions. This is what we're doing now. Yeah. We, are, we, are, we are now, we, we, we were used as a stepping stone for players' agents to use to get better contracts for their players or, or better transfer deals. Look at Diaz, look at others. Well, now, managers in... All right, he's won the league, but this is, let's, not get, let's not get this twisted. The Dutch league is no comparison to the, to the English Premier League. And we're getting used as a stepping stone to get a better contract. This is where we are as a football club. Where do Fantastic. we go from here, Brian? As I've said before, and I'm going to say it again so people can hear it loud and clear, and I've said it on this channel, I think, first. I don't care about the starting lineup. I don't care about the formation. I don't care about passages of play. I don't care who the scouting S network is. Sounds like a good team, song, Brian. Mate, I don't care how <laughs> high the skywalk is or how many you do. I don't care how fast the go tracks are. I don't care how many concerts we have. I have one objective and one objective only is to stop this repeating itself over and over again. And it will keep happening until this board and that owner and that chairman are long gone from this football club. Once you've gone, build whatever you want. Invest wherever you want. Do whatever you want. I wish you a life full of health and prosperity. But whilst you're at this football club, you are public enemy number one to me. And I'm not going to stop. And neither are the, the people that I do everything with going to stop until this this goes away and it ain't going to go away until they're gone brian obviously fans have been uh, banging on about levy on social media and, and whatever you've been outside the ground for a long time but do you yep. notice the difference like with how the media are starting to report on the hierarchy and also with like managers rejecting us left right and center now yep. and, and and also stating like the hierarchy and the, and how they run things as a reason do you think maybe the wider footballing world is starting to wake up to what is really going on at tottenham do you know what uh, i mean you've got this is how bad this is how bad it is um you look at it ollie holt did a tremendous piece a tremendous piece last week uh highlighting exactly what you're saying simon and showing that the media are now reporting it more ollie holt himself has to come out and say i don't know why i'm getting attacked so much by spurs fans for this article that's how bad it's got the media is talking about it. The media are speaking openly and reporting a lot about it. Because let's face it, this has been a a, a, a a situation where it's been the Spurs fans that have been, or like myself and all the other protesters, Stell and everyone like that, that have been saying this for ages and not being listened to. And now they are being listened to. And now it's not just us. It's away fans. It's travelling fans. It's, it's a, Everywhere knows that this is a problem. Ollie Holt does a tremendous piece on it and he gets attacked by Spurs fans. I just don't understand where everyone else can see this and portions of our fan base are still going on like there's nothing to see. If you look at it, the current state of affairs, like I tweeted this morning, Sim, we have a chairman no one wants to talk to or operate with or deal with, whether it be managers, financial, transfers, whatever. We've had directors of football that have left because they're either corrupt or, or not listened to us or, or, or heard and, and allowed to invoke their, their blueprint. We have managers that aren't backed when they're there. And then 
don't want to talk to us now when we're looking for a manager. In fact, we're being used as a stepping uh, 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 a stepping stone to, to get what these managers want elsewhere. Yet, we as a collective spend too much time bitching with each other or going, no, you can't possibly write, or no, you're wrong, or being very, very rude, aff- offensive and abusive to each other, which I do not condone under any circumstances, uh, the rudeness and being abusive on both sides. Um, yet yeah, here we are saying that, yeah, everything is rosy, or, 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 or not, as a, not as a whole, seeing that there is a very, very, very big problem at this football club. And the PR is just absolutely abysmal at this football club as well. I mean, first of all, the Nagelsmann thing, you know, the brief from the club from um, for the Nagelsmann um, deal falling through is because he was never, apparently he was never a contender anyway. We were never going to talk to him and we never really wanted him anyway. So apparently that was the, 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 the word from the club, which was astonishing to hear if that's true. And now the brief from the club on this one is apparently we didn't want to pay the fee that Feyenoord were demanding, which was about £15 million. I mean, either they think we're absolutely stupid and uh, all going to believe it, or if it is true, if we are going to take it at face value, it makes it makes it seem worse for them. So, so I don't understand why they would brief something that makes them seem so bad. Well, well, well so you look at it, and this, this is the bit that's getting me when, when, when you look at it with the, uh, with, the, with the fee. It's like... You've courted this guy. You've done your due diligence. You've made him, this is your number one. You know there's going to be a fee. Why are you going and spending all this time and peacocking around and strutting your stuff that this is the guy, this is the way we want to go? You go to get him. Of course there's going to be a fee. You've publicly admitted your admiration for him. You've intended to make a move for him. He's just won a, he's just won a league title. And then you won't pay the fee. But you, you'll go back to, to, to somewhere, like Nuno, like I've said uh, many times, we're going to end up doing all this, like season ticket renewal dates, people. Just remember that the fees are coming in. These are why these names are being called. And here we go. The managers are, are going to be saying, no, 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 we're not coming. All just in time. To... I want to thank Arnie Slot for turning us down prior to this going ahead. He's cut it short. Thank you, Arnie Slot, for calling it out as it is, rather than letting the club drag this on and on and on and lead fans to believe. But Simeon, you had a, you had another thing that you say, and I was talking to Ben about this on the phone last night. You talk about the the way this is being tr- portrayed. This is how bad this club is. We are in our worst situation that we have been in recent history. And a few days ago, it might have been yesterday or the day before, the club do it on this day a year ago. We qualified for the Champions League by beating Norwich five nil. They released that <laughs> on all their social medias going, on this day, and you're like, well, let's fast forward a year. We've gone through three managers, a director of football. <laughs> what about we on this get... day? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I, I can't wait for this time next year when they're going to do this again. Cause <laughs> they have to do it. So it's like, how embarrassing is this football club? I mean, I've just been said something. Apparently, the trust have released that today based on the one Hotspur membership and the price increases. It's it's just every single day there is something bad. I mean, I think, honestly, they should say to the Spurs official media team or, or social media, needs to take a time out. Don't just go radio silent unless there is, like, breaking news because all this stuff you're doing, you are getting bombarded and it's embarrassing. Like oh, when yeah. we won the FA Cup against Forest on this day 31 years ago, or 32, we won the FA Cup. OK, well done, Spurs. Highlight it yeah, a little why, bit more. Why, why didn't they say on that on that tweet about when we won the FA Cup? Oh, on this day, we claimed uh, the most FA Cups in FA Cup history. And now we've been over <laughs> by Manchester United, Arsenal and um, level with Liverpool. Yeah, it, 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 I just, it beggars belief what this club is doing. This club on every single department is broken. Now, I, I am going to keep saying this, as I've said it a long time, because people need to realise this. People like myself, Stell, Billy Carnes, all the others that we do protest with, or me and Stell, I'm going to talk about me and Stell for a bit, that will come onto this channel from, from when we started, and we spoke about this relentlessly. And we got a lot of criticism for it. A lot of criticism for it. And had debates, even with you, YouTube, debates, not arguments, mm-hmm. debates. We were talking about this and got 
absolutely annihilated. I stood outside a training ground in January, last January, with Ryan Isaacs, Graham, a few others, and then it gained more momentum, saying the same thing. We're here again, but now, thankfully, we're in a place where it is spoken about very, very heavily. Very, very heavily. Because what we've been saying, you might not agree with the message we tried to portray or how we portrayed it, but everything that we, 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 were, we were arguing about or, or, or trying to get out there to say, how can you accept this? There you go, Ben. There you go. There you go. It, hold it up like a trophy. We've won a trophy. Um, <laughs> so this is a, we so, don't do that so, at Tottenham. <laughs> but this, this is where we are. Um, we're at this point now, and we've got to, we, we've got to do something. We have got, to, I mean, it's not that people have got to see where, where, where this is right now and say, no more do I accept this. No more do I want this. And and try to force this or not force maybe the wrong word, but but we're in a position now where we're a wounded animal. We are a wounded animal and everyone is just praying around us and we're, we're a banter club. Facts. And we deserve everything coming our way. Everything Absolute that comes facts. our way. Whether it be West Ham winning a uh, bed, what did I say to you last week? And I'll say it live here. I hope West Ham United win the Conference League. That's right. I hope they win it. All the banter that comes our way deserve it. A trophy before us, a European trophy before us. But here we go. Oh yeah, but they went. They tried to struggle. If they win the Europa Conference League, they've had a better season than us. Oh, Period. Of course. Of course Period. Have. But yet still it'll be, oh, it's a Mickey Mouse pub and oh, they almost got relegated and oh, this and oh, that. And also, what you mentioned as well, Simeon, before, and I had to get, Harry Kane, you just mentioned, where will we be without him? Mm -hmm. You're going to get up to me and I'll put the belt on with you again for mental health charities. He's gone this summer. He's gone. Since these interviews, oh, yeah, we're going to see what the club says, blah, blah, blah. Well, you've lost out on Nagelsmann. You tried to spin it. It backfired on you. You've now tried to go for Arnie Slot. It's backfired on you. Everything. Does this make Harry Kane think, oh, yes, now I believe that we're really going to push for it this summer. This is going to be the season where we really do things. Um, the problem is the price. That's the thing that's probably keeping Harry Kane here. Brian, the uh, Athletic is just on an article on Tottenham's managerial search, and one of the quotes in the article says, uh, During conversations with various sources over the last few weeks, a recurring theme has been the, the, the idea that Tottenham are a manager's graveyard. It's been suggested that some prospective head coaches have looked at that thought and uh, have looked at that and been given pause for thought. I don't, I, don't think we need, I don't think we need an uh, uh, article from The Athletic to, to say that. I mean, it's been pretty obvious that for, for ages now, to be honest. We've burnt Mourinho, burnt Pochettino, burnt uh, Antonio Conte. Who else is going to want to join us? We said that before we hired Antonio Conte. We said when Antonio Conte came in here, if we do, if Conte comes here and not win anything and fails, mm -hmm. who else is going to join us? We said that. And we're, at that, we're in that situation now. Exactly. Um, and, and take a minute. Uh, talks may have begun with Harry Kane. That's what they'll try and do. Doesn't mean he's staying. Are you get, would you stay right now? I'm a Tottenham mate. I'd be trying to get out of Tottenham as quickly as I could right now if I was in Harry Kane's position. I'm being serious. If I want to win a trophy, I, I that's what I want. I'm running. It's just embarrassing. A team that can attract Harry or has Harry Kane, you get the opportunity to work with this unbelievable talent. And as the Athletic have said, we have become a manager's graveyard. People are running in the other direction to stay away from this place. And Brian, does it say a lot to you when teams like Brighton, Brighton are overtaking us, right? With the budgets that they have, um, you know, they've got, they've got Paul Barber on the board there who's getting all this kind of plaudits for doing the amazing work that he did do. Why couldn't he do this work here? God knows, could have probably cost money or it wasn't what he wanted. You, you, you raised a good point. And again, I, I mentioned this to Stel yesterday and I don't think anyone's picked up on it. Um, when we said we're going down, we, we, Ben, you and I were together on Sunday when we, 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 took, we spoke about this, then you and Sim did the next day about this new style of way we're going to look at the football club and we're reaching out to, 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 to bookies and, and all these other ones to try and create this formula. Well, if you've hired a director of football and a chief footballing officer, or you're about to hire a director of football, maybe, 
surely they should be deciding what, because Daniel is staying away from football decisions. He's staying away from them. He's not getting involved. But we're going to go down this road and anyone we hire has to follow that. Why is it not, let's bring in the director of football to work with Scott Money if a director of football does come in, because I was saying yesterday I heard that we're not even going to go that far and not, there won't be a director of football. It will be Scott Munn, chief footballing officer and the manager. Well, surely it will be Scott Munn and the football manager's decision to go, well, yes, we know with Brentford and Brighton this, this avenue uh, or this, this football and this method is working, but just because you implement it right now, it's not going to work on the first window. The new manager has to be appointed and assess the squad and see what players we've got and what he wants and what he wants to get rid of. Then that manager <laughs> needs to say, right, these are the players I need in these positions. And then you need to start rallying up the data to find the player that fits the uh, that fits the, the, the attributes that the manager wants. Yeah. So we've got to do all that. It's going to take two, three years for that to last. We need now, right here, right now, for next season, but nope, again, he can't keep his nose and, and mouth out of anything. And his eyes, he, he is all, all over everything at this football club. Everything. And until this man is gone, and until the owners are gone, this will keep happening. It will be this time next year, and we're talking about Manager X being out. Lee, um, Romano's just quote, um, uh, tweets out a quote from yeah. Jose Mourinho. He says, Tottenham is the only club with which I do not have a close bond, probably because the stadium was empty at the time of COVID and because President Levy didn't let me play the final and win a trophy. But it's the only club in my life I don't have a close bond with. Yep. Well, do well, you know what? Thank God for uh, Jose Mourinho and these managers that are now talking. Thank God. We, we, uh, we, we, we need more. We need more players more ex-managers, more directors of football, more whatever it is to come out and speak it as it is. Not what they need to tear this place down. Because you look at Jamie, o people go Jamie O'Hara, Ramon Vega, and these people, and Jermaine Genus, other players coming out. And then if they come out and say this, it was like, oh, well, Ramon Vega was a crap player. Yeah, what a trophy. What a trophy. Jose Mourinho was a ship footballer. Great manager. Makes no difference. Jamie O'Hara, who people are now going, oh, Ledley King stands up for Spurs. And he does this. and he, Well, he's on the payroll. Of course he's going to say it. Jamie O'Hara is a Tottenham Hotspur boy through and through. Funnily enough, he's not paid by Tottenham. And look what he says. Jermaine Genus, not paid by the BBC. Look what he I mean, I mean, he is paid by the BBC. Not paid by Spurs. Look what he says. We need people that are not on this payroll. I would love Gary Mabbott. If Gary Mabbott would come out and say something, it would be incredible. But he He's won't. also and on I, the I, payroll from the club, isn't he? he? No, he is. But Gary Mabbott is one of the nicest men you'll ever meet in your life. He is an absolute scholar and a gent. And does so much. You look at what he did during COVID. We call in the vulnerable. That man, I love him dearly. Whatever he that man does. I'm okay. for about an hour during COVID, I think. Yeah. He, he's an unbelievable human being. and But I'm talking someone of that elk. Someone yeah. of that stature within Spurs, within the Spurs community or within the Spurs players or management needs to come out that is not on the payroll and say something. I mean, Stevie Perryman has started to say bits. But we need someone like him to come out and then this, get, this will get a lot worse for, for, for Levy and Enoch. And it needs to be. Brian, I think we should play a bit of uh, Ryan Mason uh, bingo or something. Like, when do you think Ryan Mason is going to be announced as the new Spurs permanent manager? I, I, I still think it's be Brendan Rodgers. You think Brendan? I still, yeah, I, I, it's got it written all over it. Um, I, uh, someone even said in it, apparently he has been approached already. <laughs> yeah, there's no reliable to... sources saying that. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Well, put it this way. Well, listen, with this club and with Daniel Levy in charge, there's no smoke without fire. That's what you've got to remember. Even with with bullshit, there's an element of truth in it because of what goes on at this football club. Um, I th I think okay. If I was to if I was to put it if I was to put it down to two people, Rogers or Mason. Yeah. That's that's where, that that that's that's where we are. Fantastic. 
That is the sorry <laughs> state of our <laughs> beloved Tottenham Hotspur right now. But Brian, thank you so much for coming on today, my friend, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Yeah, always a pleasure. Listen, I'm going live at 7 p.m. once I finish work, and we'll be doing my absolute nuts. Working and hard, it Brian. Me, yeah, it, it gives more time for the, the shit show to develop. Um, always a pleasure, guys. Always a pleasure to everyone in the chat. And as always, Levy, out.